Hello viewers, welcome back to my channel. From this video onwards, I'm going to start with a practical series in which I'm going to perform hands-on experiments on the subject Advanced System Security and Digital Forensics. So first of all, what is the need of this? This particular subject revolves around data, how to provide security to the data and what are the various ways in which the attackers try to attack on that piece of data. Okay, so as we all know, data is the new oil. Organizations spend a lot on securing that particular piece of data. So it's the responsibility of IT engineers to provide security to the data of the organization. So what are the various ways in which the attackers attack on your system? So I'm going to divide each video of this entire mini series into two sections. The first section will be focusing on the concepts behind the hands-on experiment. I'm going to discuss about what is the theoretical aspect of this particular experiment. And in the second session, I will actually uh, show you my computer screen where I would be performing the experiments in a hands-on fashion. You're going to follow me and perform the same on your virtual environment, on your desktop or on your laptops. Okay, so let's start with the very first experiment in the series. We are going to have 13 to 14 experiments. I'm going to start with the very first experiment of the series from this video onwards. It's going to focus on finding vulnerabilities. Let me write it for you. Finding vulnerabilities in static C C++ code using a tool which is called as flaw finder. This is a very handy tool. This tool is used to find out the uh, logical errors. I'm calling out logical errors because flaws are not your static errors or they are not your syntax errors. Flaws are basically such errors which either creep in due to bad programming uh, policies, due to bad programming practices or due to some negligence in uh, your logical construct. So what happens is, just take an example. There is a data structure in your program which accepts the data continuously from the user without even checking the bounds or the foundations or the boundaries of that data or the limits of the data or size of the data. So what exactly happens is, this particular flaw can be exploited by an attacker who might try to send some malicious extra piece of code using that particular data structure. What happens is the extra piece of code may move into some unallocated spaces of your memory or it may actually overwrite the already existing data of your memory. As already focused that data is the new oil, so we can't afford to lose our data. If I'm running an organization, data is of utmost importance to me. I can't lose my data. So what happens is, so what happens is that particular piece of code is going to be very vulnerable and the organization may face some consequences because of that piece of code or that piece of vulnerable code. So that is what we are going to perform in this experiment number one that is finding vulnerabilities in static C, C++ code using a tool which is called as flaw finder. So what are we waiting for? Let me switch back to my computer screen and show you how to perform these experiments in a hands-on fashion. Stay tuned. So viewers, as explained in the introductory part of this video, Flaw Finder is all about finding out some bugs or some vulnerabilities in our static code. So let's start this process of finding out the vulnerabilities in our static code with the help of this tool which is called as Flaw Finder. Let's get started. So the very first thing you need to do is you need to open your internet browser and go to this website which is called as dwheeler.com slash Flaw Finder. Over here you are going to get the uh, link from where you can download the flaw finder tool. Uh, in my case, it is Windows version, so I'm clicking on this link and then download the typical release or the re uh, latest release of flaw finder, which is over here. So click it and you will find the latest version of flaw finder. Okay, it is a zip file, it gets downloaded. So go to the location and install the file. extracted so these are the contents of the file as you can see it's a very small file hardly few kbs 659 kb in short so we have completed our first step of downloading flaw finder which is basically designed on python framework so what you need to do is the very next step is you should have python installed on your machine either you can separately download python or you can 
have any python ide in my case i have anaconda okay so for downloading that you can visit this website anaconda.com slash products and then individual edition when you scroll down you will have options of downloading python for various machines in my case i am running a 64-bit windows processor so i will download this once after installing python on your machine that is installing anaconda on your machine what you can do is go to search and type anaconda the very first thing that is visible to you is anaconda prompt click on it and it will open something like this so what you need to do is now the next step is you should go inside the particular folder where flow finder is actually installed so it is downloaded in this particular folder flow finder 2.0.11 the version as you can see there is one more folder don't make a mistake you have to go inside this folder also okay because this is the actual root folder okay so now what you can do is you need to copy this entire path open your anaconda prompt as you have already installed anaconda whenever you type in anaconda the very first thing which will pop up is anaconda prompt if not you can search for anaconda prompt and open anaconda okay this is how it will look what you can do is whatever path you have copied you have to go inside that path using the change directory command so type in cd space the exact path press enter this is how your interface will look like now what you should do is you have already completed the copying and downloading the particular flow finder folder on your machine next step is you need to install your flow finder application as we have already told that flow finder is uh, designed using python we need to make use of python commands which is basically pip install flow finder this will install flow finder on your machine once you press it it will download the flow finder libraries in my case it is already being installed on my machine so it won't do anything okay what it does is it downloads the required libraries like required packages for this particular application within six to seven seconds and that will be done so next up we need to actually implement this entire experiment that is finding out the flaws in our static code for that we need some sort of c file or c++ file let me tell you this application works on c and c++ files only so in case you don't have any c files or c++ files ready with you you can test this application with any uh, file downloaded from the internet or you can create your own c c++ files for just testing purpose in my case uh, flow finder uh, in my case flow finder already has some test files for you to test with for example over here it is having a file buggy.c what you can do is as you are already inside this particular folder and you already have this file present inside that folder only you don't need to change the directories what you need to do is you simply need to type this command python space flaw finder space buggy.c just make sure if you are having this particular c file present anywhere else in any other folder you need to type in the exact location of that file slash the file name dot its extension as i'm already present inside this particular folder or this directory i am not writing the entire path once again okay so let's press enter and check what happens so this is what happens this particular file coincidentally doesn't have any bugs present inside it so how to test whether a particular file is buggy or not okay so flow finder has its provisions also if you check their website they have this particular section over here you can download this c program this particular c program is intentionally buggy what you can do is you can copy this entire code go to notepad paste it and save this file as a c file okay let me save it as dummy.c okay just make sure it is all files and then press enter okay so now we have a buggy file with us which is basically used for testing purpose so what i can do is i can go to uh, my desktop and check for this particular file which i have just now created which is yeah so here it is just go to properties copy its entire path now come back to this command prompt okay instead of this buggy.c i need to press in the entire path of the file slash the file name 
dot its extension which is dummy dot c now let's press enter as you can see i can see that there are 36 hits it simply means there are 36 lines or 36 instances where we have found bugs with the help of this tool flaw finder let me uh, go through one uh, one or two of these bugs and analyze what exactly we have obtained so far okay so from here the results begin line number 32 let me open this with a text editor i can use any of these text editors or I can simply use sublime sublime text okay now it's easy to go to line number 32 over here gets so what exactly happens is at line number 32 over here at line number 32 or 31 yeah 32 there is a function called gets and gets is basically obsolete nowadays gets get particular function is not used we can make use of the function f gets what exactly happens is this gets function gives rise to a situation which is called as buffer overflow buffer overflow is a situation where you are sending some data to be stored on a buffer but what will happen is if at some instant of time the buffer runs out of space the extra data will overlap or the extra data will overflow into some adjacent memory locations and it can be used maliciously by any attacker the attacker may send any malicious piece of code which may eventually overflow adjacent memory location and cause some malicious activities without even your knowledge this is what we call as buffer overflow and such a situation may arise because of this simple looking yet dangerous kind of a vulnerability so these are just examples of what the particular tool flow finder can identify you can see there are n number of such vulnerabilities which can be identified with the help of this tool which is called as flaw finder so basically these are not syntax errors these are some bugs or some vulnerabilities which may remain undetected for a long amount of time for a long period of time if not uh, properly analyzed so this tool is basically used for analyzing the static code before during or even after the production of that particular software or that piece of code so this is very handy in terms of software testing whenever that particular piece of code is analyzed it will check whether such piece of code is vulnerable or not so that's it for this particular experiment i hope you like this experiment stay tuned for the upcoming experiments in this particular subject which is called as advanced system security and digital forensics thank you so much if you like this video do leave your comments your likes and don't forget to share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to my channel thanks a lot